appendicitis. Our first case is a large lipoma with an associated intussusception and pseudoappendicitis. There is a large fat density mass within the lumen of the colon. And there is a large vascular pedicle with mesenteric fat dragged up into that lumen, uh, this being the intussusception. Lastly, due to the intussusception, there has been obstruction of the appendix, which has become inflamed. There is a small appendical lift, there is distension, and there is wall thickening. So these meet all the criteria for acute appendicitis, although upon viewing the cine, you may suspect it's mechanical. So there is that fat density. Here is the vascular pedicle and mesenteric fat of the intussusception. And here we'll see the appendix, dilated, thick-walled, and with an appendical lith. Again, meeting the criteria for acute appendicitis. Obviously, this patient may need surgery for the intussusception in any case. So that is a lipoma with intussusception, a common lead point causing intussusception in adults with secondary appendicitis. Our next case is a mechal diverticulum. This, of course, the classic fooler. It's in much the same location as the appendix, but of course it comes off the terminal ilium. There is a blind ending pouch here that's demonstrating significant inflammatory stranding. And you can see a small focus of gas consistent with a perforation. On the next image down, you can see a stone within that diverticulum, that being a common finding as well. On the cine, you can really appreciate that this pouch is blind ending. Its tip is towards the left aspect, and its base towards the right. And right there, you can see a loop of terminal ilium passing immediately past the base of that diverticulum. So there again is the diverticulum. You see the small valve passing across its base and continuing on. So that is a case of mechal diverticulum with perforation. Our next case is a severe appendicitis. I thought this interesting in that you can get appendicitis that is so advanced and so severely inflamed and infected that the appendix practically disappears into just a mass of stranding. And that's what you see here. There's an arc of stranding and inflammatory uh, mess there that actually forms a circle around encircled loops of terminal ilium, which you can see right here. On the coronal, you can also appreciate the tubular nature and circular nature of that inflamed appendix. And there again is the encircled terminal ilium with associated small bowel obstruction. And even further back, again, you can see that uh, barely visible appendix and the encircled terminal ilium. So they're followed in a complete circle. You see that ghost of a dilated, stranded appendix makes a perfect circle that encircles the terminal ilium. There it is on the coronal. Again, a perfect circle, and you can just appreciate that terminal ilium wrapped up by that circular appendix. So that is one of the more severe cases of appendicitis that I've ever seen with an associated obstruction of the terminal ilium. Our next case is appendicitis with an abscess and associated small bowel obstruction. Sometimes when an appendix has perforated and caused an abscess, it can be difficult to identify the native appendix. And in this case, we're lucky that we can still see that hyperdense uh, tubular appendix surrounded by a fluid collection denoting perforation and abscess. In addition, there's significant dilation of the small bowel, suggesting this abscess uh, either by mechanical 
or associated inflammatory processes has caused a small bowel obstruction. So let's first look at the abscess itself. You can see the base of the appendix posteriorly there, right, extending then into this fluid collection. You can also see the small bowel passing just under it, and the resultant obstruction related to that inflammation. So that is a case of appendicitis with abscess formation and associated small bowel obstruction. Our next case is a severe appendicitis with associated colitis manifesting here as colonic pneumatosis which you'll see throughout the ascending colon. There is also a dilated appendix with wall thickening and stranding and an intraluminal appendicolith to effectively hand you the diagnosis of primary appendicitis. So here is that pneumatosis present throughout pretty much the entirety of the ascending colon. And now inferior to the cecum, you'll see the dilated thick-walled appendix and the associated appendical lith. So that is a case of appendicitis with ascending colitis. Our next case is appendicitis with septic portal venous thrombosis. There's a little teaser here in the liver where there's a small hypodensity with surrounding hypervascular, hyperdense triangle of increased enhancement related to portal venous obstruction. We saw that in our hepatic vascular lecture. That is that manifesting in microcosm. Here in the superior mesenteric vein, you can see a filling defect. And in the right lower quadrant, there's significant adenopathy. And in the pelvis, of course, a thick-walled dilated appendix dropping back there into the uh, right true pelvis. So first, we will look at that small focus of hypodensity in the liver and the associated very subtle perfusion changes adjacent to it. Next we'll go down to the superior mesenteric vein which you see there and there is the filling defect involving it and many of its branches. Now let's go to the pelvis and find that dilated thick-walled, blind ending appendix. So that is a case of acute appendicitis with associated septic thrombophlebitis of the superior mesenteric vein and ultimately the intrahepatic portal vein. Our next case is a Crohn disease with postoperative fistula. This patient presented with an abscess in the right lower quadrant, extensive adenopathy, and there again all the stranding and adenopathy visible in the right lower quadrant. And then more inferiorly in the pelvis there is significant wall thickening involving the terminal ilium over a very long segment with relatively little mesenteric fluid and stranding and relatively distant from the significant abscess present in the right lower quadrant. This is something that probably should have tipped the initial reader to the presence of Crohn disease. However, it was called acute appendicitis with abscess and the patient underwent an appendectomy. Less than two weeks later, she was re-scanned and had this tract full of oral contrast with a gas collection in the anterior abdominal wall and the extension of that oral contrast to the skin surface. So this is the dreaded complication of postoperative Crohn disease, a postoperative cutaneous fistula. 
So here is the adenopathy and the abscess. But then note this extensive lengthy segment of terminal ileal wall thickening, suggesting that something other than just appendicitis uh, may be present here. So that's a case of Crohn disease with an acute presentation and a postoperative cutaneous fistula. Our last case is an appendiceal mucosal with rupture and carcinomatosis. There is an abnormal scalloped contour to the liver, suggesting the presence of mucinous carcinomatosis. Lower down, there is extensive omental nodularity. That micronodularity of the omentum can be very difficult to appreciate, especially in the presence of extensive intraperitoneal fluid. So make sure you are evaluating it in these big distended abdomens full of fluid. Make sure you get to a relatively dry point uh, anteriorly where you can appreciate micronodularity should it be present. Lower in the pelvis, there's more omental nodularity and fluid. And in addition, there's just the ghost of a barely visible, massively dilated appendix, which represents the appendiceal mucosal. And at its tip, there is a small focus of contrast extravasation, denoting active hemorrhage related to rupture. So let's first appreciate that Omental nodularity anteriorly, again important to appreciate that distant from the dependent intraperitoneal fluid. Now let's go back up and view that ghost of an appendix here from its base, barely visible and with a little focus of active extravasation at its tip. Let's also go back up to the liver and just appreciate the scalloped contour, especially that lateral segment of the left liver lobe. Really distorted, and you can see due to hypodense or fluid density pressure against its outer surface. So that is an appendiceal mucosal with rupture, carcinomatosis, and hemorrhage. And that concludes this session on acute appendicitis.